I'm scared. <laughs> All right, I'm Nick Avron, owner of the Arsenal. This is Justin Sloan, Doug McFarlane, Zach Vitelli, Nick Wells, and Mr. USBC record holder here, Tom Jordan. We don't talk much, but we're just here to bowl. We're going to show up, do what we can. We have a couple fun matches back and forth with this team. Audrey and myself have bowled against Chris and Brian for the uncapped belts. We're one and one. We're going to see what we do today. I'm Brian Walton, vice president of Class Acts and captain today. These are my my, my teammates right here. You got Mike Merrill, Pedro, yeah. myself, Brian, Chris Fawcett, and Zach Bockholtz. We're all at, we're based out of Spins Bowl Poughkeepsie, and we ain't ready for that smoke. We get it on today, boys. I'm here with Shandai Fee's son. Shandai, how are you doing today? Feeling very good, feeling very good. So um, right now we have, well, our very first clash is the inaugural clash. Yes, and, and here's how this works. You have one bowler from each team bowling against each other. This is a best of five match. There is also finances attached to that, but we will get to that later. Right now, what we're going to be focusing on is our first matchup, Justin Sloan versus and Pedro Agapito, and I really hope I get that right. If I get this wrong, I apologize to everybody because my pronunciation of names is oh ghastly. Pedro is up first for Class Axe. Here's the first shot coming up, and we got a little bit of an open situation, 410. Yes, we do. We have a 410 to open for Mr. Agapito. And Agapito right now looking to, well, not do what he just did. Right now, the axe needs to be sharpened for Class Axe. And speaking of Class Axe, Class Axe victorious earlier in their in a heavyweight contest. And let's just see if they can be heavy here and not heavy on one another. And open frame, not a good, not a good start for Class Axe in the inaugural ball. Well, not no. brawl, inaugural, inaugural clash. Inaugural clash. Yeah, so this is. We're getting one and two on. Yeah. So they're going to ask to get one, lanes one and two on as a warm-up pair, which is good. I'm going to do, do that momentarily, but let me explain the rules. Rules is this. This is a one-game match. For each game that they win, each team obviously gets one added to their win column. Three of them will officially win the clash, and then we'll go from there. All five teams, people will be bullying because, as I said, there's other stakes that are involved in this match. But focus is three out of five. Meanwhile, while I am going to get a practice spell on lanes one and two, Sean Knight is calling the action. All right. Thank you very much, Gordon. And yes, you are being joined by the voice of choice here at Bowler City in Hackensack, New Jersey. And right now he is looking to hack up the lanes and that is a double and Justin Sloan slaps it out. Anyone who's familiar with Mr. Sloan, known that he's known for knocking the pins down and slapping it out, walking it out. And right now he, his hat under his hat is a fire and that fire is burning early. Hopefully it's not a roaring flame that will extinguish early because they need to keep roaring hot and right now that is a great adjustment by Mr. Agapito. So Pedro representing Class X, Class X. They are a team in the Metro North Division of UBA and representing New Jersey Northeast, the Arsenal. I know they're both looking to do well in their divisions, being that this is the start of the 2023 slash 2024 season of UBA season tours. Frame three, lane four, and yes, that is definitely more than nine, that is 10. So open frame to start for Pedro Agapito. But Follows it up with a double, looking to hopefully wipe out that first frame. Hopefully that first frame will not come back to chop them down. Justin Sloan up on frame free, lane three. And let's see if he can keep up this perfect pace that he's starting. Sloan up, Sloan out, and right now, a good lead. 300 max for Justin Sloan, potentially, and 279 max. Uh, for Pedro Agapito. This is a new concept, The Clash, an exciting new concept that hopefully, um, if you're watching this, and we know that you are, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll definitely dabble in. Many great teams out there, I'm sure they have an arsenal of individuals that they could put together and clash with someone else. Yeah, you see what I did there, yep. 
And let's see if the cannon's still loaded up. See if we got some gunpowder in there. Cannons to the left of them. Cannons to the right of them. And potential four and nine. And it has broken up. The four stands, nine drops. Stuck in the middle with a four, Pim. Stuck in the middle with a four. And this is now turned from 300 max. Considering that we make a spare and we don't want to assume because anyone who watched we, we earlier's match, somebody pull yes, four pit earlier on the day, so yes, you don't want to, you, you don't want to uh, see that happen. Because we so, already know how to spell assume when we know the first three letters. Yeah, 279, 279, max on both. This, I think, this is going to be a fun format. What do you think so far? I think I mean, this early, obviously, but what do you think so far? Well, you know, sometimes a good early beginnings could show for for beautiful endings, and hopefully this does not end. This is going to be a great concept. This is a great concept, and you are seeing it. And no matter what happens, whether they're on the winning end or losing end, they're a part of history. And let's see if all ten pins are history. And yeah, he blows them back. Ten gone from the rack, and he keeps up that pace after that first frame debacle. Did Pedro Agapito? Yeah, right now we we are tied. Assuming that Pedro throws a strike here, we're tied. I mean, technically we are tied right now. They both go out the door. It's 279. And what would happen if said tie was to happen? Well, if said tie was to happen, then we're tied, and then we keep going. In in that case, essentially, it could be you know best of three wins. It could be two and a half, two and a half, and and nothing gets proven. Then it goes to total one. And. Uh, and looks like Pedro got the first shot jitters out because right now it seems like the second frame in his mind was his first frame. And like I said, you have to have a warm up, warm up frame. And you know, you got to have short term memory. You, you make a mistake, you correct it, and you got to keep going because if you keep living in the past, a victory could pass you by. You can stay there. Justin Sloan right now leaving a four pin on the first shot, starting over in the fifth frame. Last shot, that ball's got to hurry up a little bit, and oh boy, not out of trouble, 4-7. And it went from extremely bad to makeable and dealable, and you can deal with a, uh, a, high, a high eight count rather than a 4-7-10, which was going to be left, but the 10 basically laid down nicely. Candlelit dinner for the 10 pin. Yeah, right now, Justin Sloan looking to make the spare, and I think he's got it, and he does. Justin Stone right now. However, spares do not beat strikes. Agapito on four in a row as we go into the second half of game one. Again, if you're just joining us, this is the UBA's first ever clash. And we are clashing between Arsenal and Class Axe. Or maybe you should say Clash Axe. Mm. And right now, fun game one, Justin Sloan versus Pedro Agapito. And Agapito right now for Class X has got the lead. Sloan looking to get the strike gig back up. Six frame, that ball looks a little bit light. He gets the mix. A little, a little DJ Sloan action there, mixing it up on the ones and twos. And ironically, we're not on the ones and twos, we're on the threes and fours. Yeah, Justin Sloan right now, not a, he clapped on that, but he's not a happy person right now. He's, he's cursing himself out because Agapito right now has got a chance to extend that lead out. Yeah, he has a chance to um, add an extendo there. Uh, I don't know if axes have extendos, but if they do, he's going to put on the rubber grip and he's going to see if he can slice through this and maybe make this um, a five-piece, a five-piece meal. Going for a five-piece meal right here. That ball's like three six ten. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on, yeah, that ball's high three six ten. Either way, three six ten. Arsenal has a lead back by at least one, maybe more than that. Yeah, and we are definitely watching a class. Oh, and a chop action from the member of Class X. And that is not his idea of what he wanted to do uh, with his axe. He wanted to chop all down, not partial. So right now what we're witnessing is a clash of titans within their own divisions. Class X, pretty dominant for the most part in the Metro North Division last season. Arsenal made a good run, and they're looking to, well, maybe right some wrongs or maybe add on to some rights and everything was right with that shot from Pedro Agapito. Inaugural, uh, not season brawl, because season brawls already happened, but they will be happening. Uh, for all those who enjoyed those, look forward for you to participate in those, but this is the inaugural clash. And right now, we're gonna see if the pins clash and if they bang and if they fall on lane three, and all right, well, 
Not necessarily a strike, but it is much better than the two opens that were left by Pedro Agapito. Justin Sloan up on lane three. Shaking his head a little bit, trying to get his act together. And he's trying to make sure that he doesn't have an axe. And he does not. He covers the spare with no problem. Easy um, conversion of the 6-10 leave. <laughs> and as you hear in the background, spares are for squares, um, quoting Nick Gavron. Uh, we have some members of carpet crews. And for those who are not bowling, they are standing back watching maybe trying to gain a little foresight, watch any potential transitions, which may not even really be a factor because we are not going to be on the same pair, if I believe. No, you are going to be on the same pair. Everybody's going to be on the same pair. That's part of the whole thing about being a team. Everybody's going to be on lanes three and four. So teams got to talk about breakdown. They got to talk about ball change. They got to talk about everything. This is, this is part of the clash. This is really going to teach your team, or this is going to be a good test on your team in terms of communication. Justin Sloan right now completely misses the head pin on that. That was not a good adjustment, whatever the heck he did. And that's really not a good adjustment on whatever the heck he did. Misses the head pin, and that is a huge opportunity for Class Axe to take game one right here. Best Arsenal can do, 222. Class Axe can go out the door, 242. Yes, both teams being rather philanthropists, and they're being givers. They are giving opportunities to one another. Let's just see who could take advantage of that, and let's see who can wrap first game up. Um, you, it's good to get a 1-0 lead to get into the heads of your opponents, but 1-0 and is not necessarily not necessarily close out a potential chance for a victory, but at the same time, there's always a shot. Well, if he makes a spare here, we're tied. Yes. And it is all about and it is all about keeping your head in the game and seeing what happens, and Pedro is all over that spare, but his ball almost decided to take a little sharp turn to the left. Yeah, here we go, ninth frame. Coming up. The class acts. Actually, if they do finish tied, this is UBA rules. That means there will be a two-frame roll-off, which will determine the victor. Justin Sloan right now next to us, shaking his head in disgust as to what he did in the eighth frame. That being said, he's got a new lease on life. If he goes out the door, the worst Arsenal can do is a tie. Class Axe Pedro coming up. He didn't like that shot, but it looks good. And, the, and Class Axe cannot get shut out either. If both bowlers go out the door, we're going to start game one with a tie and a two-frame roll-off. Yes, and yes, potential roll off. Right now, you're going to see Justin basically try to um, shake himself and get his cannon ready to blast. Well, as you know, it's a mental game. It's a big mental aspect. It's all about not only what you do, it's also about what your opponent sees from you on and off the lanes. If they see that you have any doubt in your mind, that gives them a little confidence. And one on one becomes two on one. And right there, we got three claps for the ninth frame, foundation frame, and the foundation right there will hopefully lead to maybe him forcing a tie or putting the pressure on Mr. Agapito. You know, right now, I mean, it's really going to depend on what Justin does. Obviously, he does not want to do what he did there last time. But you're right. Any, any strike is going to put a lot of pressure on Pedro because whatever Justin does, Pedro's got to match. Obviously, if Pedro does one pin better than what Justin does, then Class Axe will take game one. If not, either Arsenal takes game one or we have a two-frame off as a tie. Fun, fun. Whole lot of fun especially here on a Saturday here at Bowler City in Hackensack, New Jersey. And let's see he, if he can ramsack the pocket. And wow. that is, well, definitely not what he wanted. Um, not what anyone would want. 7-10, both, both pins standing up for their rights, legs wide open. And let's see if Agapito could penetrate the situation and drive through and hit the spot for game one. Basically... Assuming that Justin does not make the spare any mark from Class Axe, they win game one. If Class Axe decides to be just as, in the words of Shondite, philanthropic, then we can have a roll-off here. Obviously, he's going to try to get the one, does not get the two. So, Justin, 190. So, basically, any nine count from Class Axe, since they're on a strike, will tie. Any mark will be a win. And Justin already said, worst shot I'm bleeping through. I'm not going to say exactly what he said because 
children. However, here we go. This is for game one right here for Class X. First shot out. This is for the game. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Well. Well, I'm not. Well, okay, then. You're, yeah, you want to see your entertainment on camera. Well, he's got to get one to get the tie. If he gets the spare, he wins. If not, and he gets one, it's a two-frame roll-off. But he does have to get at least one here. And he will, and we got a roll-off coming up. Well, well, well. When you think dark clouds are gone, the dark cloud arrives. Gordon mentions it. It happens. Shout out to Gordon Pepper for being consistent. And consistency is the key. And here's, the, here's a key for you. And here's a door that was built. The door is a roll off, two frames to be exact. 190, 190. Like I said, philanthropic. Philanthropy was full in fact today. Giving and giving, but no one willing to take. And let's see who could take this two frame roll off victory in the inaugural clash of Titans from both New Jersey Northeast and the Metro North Division. That was definitely unholy mistakes given. And speaking of holy mistakes being made, hopefully if you're watching this, you're looking forward to Unholy Alliance coming back to where it was birthed, in the Long Island area, coming back to AMF East Meadow in Long Island. Tabs open in October 17th, I believe. Yes, October 17th. And the event will be taking place November 18th. So get your groups together. For those who've never bowled Unholy Alliance, Triples teams mix each individual from a different franchise. But that is then and this is now. And all the unholy mistakes hopefully will lead to a holy grail, which is the first game leading to a victory in the inaugural clash. Yeah, yeah, we're not expecting this as the inaugural game of the clash, 190-190 tie. And even though Justin Sloan is kicking himself, he has to be kissing the pins. And he just kisses the pocket and blows the rack back. And I know right now he wishes he would have did that, but at least he did it now. He could have did it at any time. He would have loved to do it last time, but he did it this time. And let's see if Justin Sloan can match. Yeah, and here we go. Now, now Sloan over here, ninth frame strike, no problem. His bigger issue is that 10th frame. So, but first things first, let's see if he can replicate what he's usually done over here on lane three. And he does not, four pin. No, it's this, the high four pin. Very high, looking to find some rhythm. And right now he needs to sing a different tune to himself and his team is rallying behind him. So right now there is no one poking or throwing chairs or throwing darts, at least not from his own team side. Oh, well, I was gonna say, maybe not on the other side. He makes a spare though. And as we've seen, it ain't over until it's over. It's definitely not over until it's over. The one difference is, is that Justin is on a spare. Class Axe is on a strike, which would be Pedro. So Class Axe does have the advantage here. That being said, you still got to build the 10th frame. Uh, and right now, I know definitely Class Axe is voting for Pedro. And they're voting for, <laughs> and they're voting for him to take this victory. And, um, puns, puns, puns. We yes, got them all. Not a pun. So speaking of dynamite. Very good. Definitely not Napoleon there. Did not come up short. De definitely did not come up short. Now, now he's shaking his head, knowing in his mind, you know, if I do that shot, we're not having a roll-off here at this point. But we are, and he did. He second shot here. Now, second shot here, obviously, is big. Second ball here, he forces Pedro to throw the first one. I know he's got to be thinking WTF SMH. BBQ. Right. Oh, yes. And don't forget Fridays. Oh, I love Fridays. TGIF. Second shot here, that ball looks, oh no, a 10 pin. No, no, no. Well, so, that does take a little bit of pressure away from Pedro. Any mark and a strike, and we have another tie, we have another roll off. A strike, Class X wins, an open Class X loses. So, um, Obviously, this pin is very, very important for Mr. Sloan. Extremely important. And um, if this keeps happening, we could be rolling off until the, until the arms fall off. Uh, we could, we could. This is only game one. We got, we got four more of these to go. It's only game one, and we got lots of fun left. 
and the air conditioning is blasting here, so uh, we could see some Arctic icicles on the arms of people who have not thrown yet. Arctic icicles. Now here we now here we go. I, I've said this before already. Stop me if you heard this already. A strike from Pedro, and this one's over, and Class Axe wins game one. Anything else, and the best Class Axe can do is tie and force another roll off. All right, this is game one. That's his heaven pin. All right, he makes it, he's got to make it, and then he strikes, and then we have another roll off. If he misses or does not throw a strike in the fill, Arsenal wins game one. Now this is some premier action in game one, <laughs> and, and, and we're pioneering this. Everybody's pacing around and walking around. This is fun. Oh I got people from, oh, we got people of spectators. This is fun. That's right. Uh, how long? Uh oh, well, it's not going to go on for that long. And He's win game one. And well, I talked about keys, and survival is the key. Sometimes you have to survive before you thrive. And Justin Sloan struggled, but right now he could just walk. And in the words of Tony Braxton, he can breathe again because he just outlasted game one. And we're going to hand the mic to Gordon Pepper. Thank you. Yeah, if these other games are like this one, this is going to be crazy time here. Yeah. All right, so you selected first. Yep. You select this one. You have four people left. Who are you selecting? The really tall, the really guy. tall guy, pale guy. That would be Doug McFarlane oh, Jr. That's his name. All right, who are you countering with? Mike Merrill. Mike Merrill? All right. Zach, I can dub. Short's going up, man. All right, Mike, Doug, you've been selected to bowl game two. Any thoughts before we start? Let's get this going. All right. Let's get out there and throw good shots. All right, let's go. Good luck to both of you. All right, we got game two, and if it was anything like game one, yipes. If you just joined us, Arsenal just won game one, 202 to 190 in, in a roll-off situation. Meanwhile, some of the teams are chatting. Chatterboxes. Chatterboxes. All right, let me set you guys up so that you have two practice balls in each lane, and then you'll get going. So if you were just watching, we just had our um, first roll-off of the day and our first roll-off in our very first clash. Justin Sloan in the two in the two frame roll-off, victorious over Pedro Agapito. We want to thank all of you who are tuning in to Caffeine TV. Uh, this is UBA's very first clash, and the clash is basically five on five. Each of you putting up your own cash. Five individual matches, one game apiece, and in the very first clash, Arsenal blasting off, the cannonballs are loaded, and they have shot, and they have won game one, so they are up. So standing right here, former tag team champion, Nick Gavron, how you feeling so far? I know, I know right now um, you was holding your breath a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's we all were. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. That's how it goes. That's how the ball roll. Yep. It's rooting my team on right now. So can you tell us a little bit about um, who you have in match number two? We have Doug McFarlane in. Very good bowler. Also a possible serial killer, <laughs> if you notice his name. <laughs> Very loud and obnoxious. He's going to talk this entire match. It was complete sarcasm. I don't think he's going to say a word. How ironic. You mentioned him being a killer, and he has Hatchet Man. That's why he has it. Um, How ironic. We got a Hatchet Man against a member of Class X. That is pretty good, actually. I wouldn't have caught that. All right. <laughs> so, so sometimes, we'll call him that. So sometimes, um, you know, iron sharpens iron, and an axe hopefully will be sharper than the other person's axe. I agree. I like Doug. Doug is a very good bowler. I, th I like his chances. Very good. All right, well, there you go. Um, shocked that we're not having you on the lanes, but I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing you. And um, any thoughts going into this season coming up, 2023? I think personally we had a great opt-out and off-season. I picked up a lot of great bowlers, mm -hmm. a couple State Hall of Famers, a couple PBA members. Mm -hmm. We're coming for it. I'm hoping for the best. We'll see. Right. I just didn't feel like bowling tonight. Uh, we have plenty of people to bowl. We're going down to get dinner in South Jersey before Dougie's tournament. 
so I really didn't want to have to rush out of here. Oh, well, definitely rest up, you know, eat well and feast hopefully on a victory later on. And, and right now I got Chris, one half of the Northeast Uncapped Tag Champs, a.k.a. Beast Mode. Congrat congratulations, first and foremost, on your heavyweight victory earlier. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are going into game two of the first ever uh, clash? Uh, pretty much makes fairs. That's going to win a match. But, you know, carry two. Um, it was a good ball, you know. That's part of bowling. So, but Mike's got a got a good look here. So I'm, I think we got this match. So can you tell us a little more about about Mike? Um, actually, I don't really know him personally, to be honest. Well, you just know <laughs> um, that he yeah, he, he, he represents he the brand. Yeah, he represents Class X. Um, you know very well. Um, he does come to a lot of tour stops, um, and you know he does perform uh, at his best. Well, the lights are on bright and the bell's gonna ring. You know, once you hear the bell, start swinging a duck. That's right. All right. Let's go. All day. All right, so we're starting game two right now, Class X versus Arsenal. If you just joined us, Arsenal is up one nothing, but not without being really, really trying to give the game over to Class X. And we could still be doing a roll off right now, except Pedro Agapizo, I believe that is his name, Mr. Tenpin, and that gave Arsenal the win. We're starting up game two. Mike, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should be able to do a, a, a next game here. All right, let me give this over here. Pardon me. All right, so right now we have Mike Merrill versus Doug McFarlane about to happen. And if you are watching on Caffeine TV, this is the inaugural, the very first ever clash, UBA clash. And again, pioneering things being the first to bring you this exclusive type of team bowling atmosphere. We've been pioneering this since 2009 and we are still going strong. A, <laughs> uh, a whole lot of tide shifts, paradigm shifts, if you will, happening in game one, resulting in not only a roll off, but a victorious roll off for, uh, for Arsenal. Justin Sloan getting the victory in game one over Pedro Agapito. And right now what you're watching is Mike Merrill of Class Axe versus Doug McFarlane of the Arsenal. First, first frame, four pin lead for Mike Merrill. Mike going pretty direct, making sure that there's a uh, little little room for error on that spare. Covers his four pin, no problem. And if you are watching right now, hopefully you're getting some ideas on who you may potentially want to hit up, maybe hit up in the DMs and whatnot for the Unholy Alliance that will be coming up in November, taking place in East Meadow, Long Island. All right now we have a spare from Mike Merrill. Doug McFarlane starting off with a strike. And Merrill going up a little high. And you have to wonder if there's any um, any jitters. Especially seeing that you're already down 0-1. You want to be the one to pick the team up. You know, make sure that you want to stay relaxed. You still want to give your all, but you don't want to overtry to the point where, well, you're a little tense and a little tight. Well, you've seen this. You know, in any UBA match, or when you think you've lost a game that you think you've won, all of a sudden you get feeling of doubt. And conversely, if you win a game that you think that you lost or should have lost, all of a sudden it's like, all right, let's 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 get the momentum going. Let's get the aggression going. And, and let's see what Doug does here. If Doug McFarlane throws the second and third frame in their strikes, all of a sudden Class Axe, already down 1-0, is now staring 
in a 0-2 potential abyss. Obviously, the game's early. Anything can happen at this point. Here's McFarlane. That ball looks light. He gets a hit. And again, if you're a class act, you're, you're hoping that you don't look at that last game and go, oh, we should have gotten that one. Mm -hmm, indeed. And you're seeing the hatchet man. <laughs> the hatchet man versus a member of class X. So we kind of have a battle of who could chop down wood. And you know what? Right now the hatchet is looking a little sharper than the X. But you know what they say, iron sharpens iron. Let's see if X sharpens X. If you've ever seen the uh, rock, paper, scissors game, scissors blunt, or, or stone blunt scissors, and in this case, maybe rock blunts hatchets. Right now, three in a row for McFarlane. Arsenal clearly right now is the lead. And if I'm Mike M, I want to cut the, if I'm Mike Merrill, I want to cut the damage now and start throwing strikes and putting some pressure on because if all he does is spares, that's going to be a problem. Yes, they definitely don't want to take two L's. Even if you put two L's facing one another and adjust the angle, it will create a W. And speaking of angle adjustment, he needs to adjust his angle to go through the pocket. And an adjustment goes from a potential Richard Nixon to only a uh, Martin Luther 10 pin. Martin Luther 10 pin. Meanwhile, I see Justin Sloan over here. Let's see if I can get his attention. Uh, uh, J Justin's like, no, don't talk to me, no. I, am. I, I got away with one. Don't you? Yeah, he's nodding his head up and down. Yeah, you, you got away with a couple. And Merrill will make the spare. <laughs> the, the, the biggest faraway interview. Hey, Justin, are you happy? <laughs> we, got, we got a smile. Oh, we see teeth. <laughs> Very good. And speaking of teeth, right now, Mike Merrill needs to sink his teeth into the fourth frame, and he needs to sink his teeth in for the rest of the game. Potential 300 max for, um, for McFarlane, and not necessarily 300 for Mike. But Mike could start something up here, and he does indeed. And right now, his four is his one, and he needs to have short-term memory, even though three frames of spares is good, but it does not better than three strikes. Well, the important thing with Clash, and one of the things that was stressed, teams need to start chatting with each other. Like right now, if Merrill, now Merrill's starting to talk with his teammates and starting to figure out, okay, what adjustments do I need to make here? And he's hoping that Doug McFarlane makes some sort of mistake or error or something so that they can get right back into this. That being said, McFarlane looks very, very buried at this moment. Four in a row for McFarlane. Arsenal right now, front four on Class Axe. Yes, one thing you will notice about the game of, uh, of the hatchet man, Doug McFarlane, his pace is his pace, his role is his role. You will never ever, well at least not often, see his pace change from either being frustrated or feeling pressure. It's very hard to rattle someone who doesn't really show much on the face. And he doesn't show much in the body language. And that is, that is the, the chess match that is a bowling match. It is more than just rolling the ball down and knocking pins down. It's all about what you show. If you don't show much, then you will always get everything that you need to. Well, you know, the, these are scratch bowlers, and they bowl repetitively, and they bowl continuously. Right there, that ball went a little bit too far outside, left a 10 pin. So Arsenal will not be getting a 300 this game. And that does open the door for class acts. You're looking at right now, 11 pin game. Despite all that, and it could be even less if he flags the 10 pin. Ooh. Can the, the angle looks, he, he got more of that than I thought he was going to get. The angle over here that we're at is a little bit different than the angle the camera gets. That being said, you're looking at, again, around a 20 pin game. Second, assuming that Mike doubles here. If he does, 20 pin game, that's very makeable in terms of picking up. Oh, definitely. You could definitely um, make up for anything that happens. And whenever you're, whenever you're bowling against somebody, and especially when it's one-on-one -on -one team aspect, everybody strikes until they don't. And when they do not strike, then all of a sudden the margins become closer and closer. And then once you get to that meeting point, you could then go from being in the rear view to being in the clear view. Uh, and the question also also becomes how much of the non-striking is also because he saw what his teammate did game one. Yeah, it could result from that, and it also could be his style of play. Uh, his style of play is from the inside. I like to call the wet to dry aspect, and he's playing in a lot of the wet, but he's not really getting out to the dry, and it's good and it's bad. From a technical aspect, it's good because 
you leave makeable spares, you make them, you close the frames. It becomes a problem when you are tapping uh, a la Savion Glover and your opponent is carrying. And he gets a little more angle on that. And as you see, he must have heard me because he created a stronger angle, created that good shape, and drove through the pins just the way he would like. Mero right now can go out the door for 246. McFarland over at Arsenal can go out 279. Right now, Arsenal still up by around uh, 33 pins as we go in, into Doug McFarland's second half of game two. Again, if you're just joining us, this is the clash. This is the first one. Arsenal right now up one zip, looking to be up two zip. Here's McFarland. That ball looks good. A little light. Oh, no. Seven pin. That goes a little light, but to point to the bowling IQ of Doug McFarlane. He is going with something very predictable, a very predictable, calm surface, nothing to overreact, something that I like to say he has permission to hit. He can hit it as much as he needs to, he can send it out as much as he needs to, and it's not going to do anything erratic or anything that's going to cause anything catastrophic and no frame debacles, hopefully. No unforced errors, as my partner likes to say. Yes, no input error. No pep cack problem exists between chair and bowling ball. So, however, spares, as we know, doesn't beat strikes. If Doug McFarlane keeps on leaving corner pins, he's going to give Class X a chance to get back into this one. Right now, it is a 22-pin lead. Another non-strike here. And it's either an under 10 pin lead or Class X can take the lead depending on what McFarlane does. Four frames left to go in game two. Here's McFarlane coming up, seventh frame. That ball looks a little bit higher and he got it. Of course, if he keeps on doing that, it's gonna be really hard for him to get caught. McFarlane right now, strike 148. He can go out for 268 right now, 22 pin lead. More importantly for Merrill, Merrill has got to figure out lane three, and he's running out of time to do it. Is this almost certainly, would you agree with me, this is almost certainly has got to be a strike? Uh, it indeed has to be a strike. Uh, a double is good for his own morale, and it sends a message that he's still here. Uh, let's see if he's still here. Uh, not still here, 3610. Yes, where? Nowhere. And um, if he keeps tapping and McFarlane keeps striking, then he's going to get nowhere fast. So high on the head, seven count, leaving the three, six, ten. Converting the spare would definitely be good. Um, he needs to make those spares matter a little more, and he needs to start knocking back some strikes. Because right now, spares are the nails, but he's not really building anything because he's dealing with a house of strikes being put together by the Hatcher man himself. Doug McFarlane. McFarlane right now. Going up, he's looking to potentially salt this game away. But eighth frame coming up. And again, the spares are no good. He hasn't opened, but he hasn't thrown strikes either. Well, coming up here, this almost has to be a strike. Oh, eight pin, wow. I mean, Merrill's gonna finish somewhere in the 190s, 200s, which is all well and good. The problem is that McFarland's still in the first four, and that put Merrill in a hole that he's not been able to get out of. Yes, yes, um, reminiscent, of, reminiscent of a dark night hole. Um, co considering that this spare is gonna be converted and he strikes out, that will be a 215 max, if I'm correct. The only chance that he would have is if McFarlane was to tap or maybe something rather catastrophic were to happen. But it looks like the hatchet man is staying sharp. Hatchet man is going to literally need to have three rhinoceroses come in and gore him a couple of times. Because one open's not going to be enough. He's going to need a multitude of opens. And right now, he's either buried every shot, or he's left a 7, or he's left a 10. Everything has been pretty much solid for McFarlane. Eighth frame coming up, and there's another one, and this game is mathematically open. Now, from this standpoint, again, since overall wood may or may not come into play here, depending, you want to get as much wood as humanly possible. If he keeps going, overall wood is not going to matter at all. Because in order for that to matter, that means Class X has got to get some wins on the board. And right now, they got none. And they need some big wins. And they need something to basically cause what I like to call a paradigm shift. Let's see if we can continue keeping the tide our way. And we have a tap. 
We have a 10-pin lead for Doug McFarlane. And even though he's up, you still don't want to give anybody any kind of hope. So you want to make sure you keep your house clean, keep your frames clean. Yeah, the theoretically, this game is over, but the shout and class action is going to go up to zip. But again, you, you need to get the wood. The wood is important. Overall, overall wood is extremely important. So even if you think it's, it's down and out, you got to remember, other people have to bowl, and you still got to keep the house clean because anything can happen. Every pin counts because there's nothing worse than getting that slow knife, that two pin or one pin loss. Yeah, you, you don't want to be up, or, or in this case, losing in a roll off. And you certainly don't want to be up two games to zero and then see that go away. And there's a strike. Yes, uh, a much needed strike uh, for his own psyche and for the psyche of the team. Right now, I'm looking at some of the members of Class X. Some of them are sweating even in the midst of the, well, the amazing air conditioning here in Bowler City. You know what? Everybody complains about everything in terms of weather conditions. I would rather, much rather be way too cold with an air conditioning than melting. No one wants to melt. Do you want to melt? Oh, I don't want to melt, and I know <laughs> Class X has definitely got to be melting right now, thinking about being down 0-2. I'm not sure about melting. I think they, they have a need to be concerned, but not melting. Right now, Mike's looking at the lane condi conditions here in the lane approaches. Talking to Justin Sloan earlier, he was mentioning that he was having some footing issues, and it was a little tacky. It was hard for him, in his words, to get to get a slide going. And you know, you can't slide, then it's hard to roll a consistent shot. Very true. All right, we will see right now what Merrill does. Tenth frame coming up. And again, you know you're not going to win, but keep the wood down. Wood is important. And that's actually one of the few times that he has not thrown a strike there in that frame. It's a little bit of a split. Yeah, we have a, what I had to call a um, pregnancy situation. Let's see if he's going to make a baby or if he's going to pull out and say no. Yeah. Let's see what he can do here. And if Merrill can make the spare and go out, it'll be a 195. He will make the spare. For the kids, for the kids. And he definitely makes that uh, potential 195 finish for Mike Merrill and potential 247 finish for Doug McFarlane. Yeah, potentially. And again, if you're Doug McFarlane, you want to pour it on right now because you don't know what any other games are going to be. This may be the lowest game that they're going to see from Class X today. After the 190, of course, Class X 192. Arsenal will finish higher than that. McFarlane coming up, 10th frame. He's already up by at least 25, looking to add to that. Getting substantial, something substantial on his side of the board. There's a strike. At your man right now, 217. Again, McFarlane can finish out with 247. right now because he's looking to try to figure out the wood. I see the calculator coming out. Right now there was no wood to be had in game one, so whatever the margin's going to be over here in game two, that's what the margin's going to be. Yeah, roll-off doesn't count. It's zero, zero. Off that 45, so margin's going to be within the 50s. Arsenal up, two zip. Now let's see, we have three bowlers left on each side. Yeah. 50, well it's 45 right now. Actually, well that's the difference in the game, so. Yeah, 247, yeah 55 if he goes out the door, and he will not. Still finishes with 246. Doug McFarland wins 246, 192. More importantly, Arsenal up to zip. And now we're going to bring uh, the captains up there. Let's get a, we're going to see what we got for game three. All right, captains. You are here. You know the drill. And you start. I start. Well, you, well, you, you actually, no, I'm sorry. You started last time. You start. Who are you selecting? Myself. Mr. Walton's coming up to play. Nick Wells. Nick Wells is coming up to play. Nick. You're up. Any words? Anything you want to say? Good luck, brother. Yeah, you got it. Good luck. All right, I'll start off two minutes of practice for you guys. Once the practice comes on, you got it.
All right, so here we are. Inaugural UBA clash, 54 pin deficit. Arsenal up two games to zero over Class X. And right now Class X needs to get in the game and get their X together. They need to sharpen it up and they need to start throwing them and throw them everywhere. But in terms of at the pins, they need to throw it better. And Mike Merrill did not throw it better than Doug McFarlane. Doug, Doug McFarlane threw it very well. He made all the right choices because it is all about choices. Choice of surface, choice of line, and then choose to just let it fly. So we're seeing, we're seeing the warm-up happening right now. And, let, and let's see if the well continues to not run dry for Arsenal. Because for Arsenal, they, are, they have Nick Wells up for game three. And for class X, we have Brian Walton. We have Brian Walton. It's going to be a very, very interesting key matchup here. Obviously, class X needs the rest. So they got to take this one. Well, what we have is a high pressure situation and someone who is not a stranger to high pressure is uh, one half of the current uncapped Northeast tag team champions being Brian Walton of Class X. Uh, the other half is Chris Fawcett, and he still has yet to bowl. That's right. Um, the Fawcett was running, and it was running wild all over the place, and he did not have an extreme water bill. Matter of fact, the bill was paid by his opponent, who we look to see a lot more of, Keyshawn, a.k.a. Key, key Glock, of exit wounds. But speaking of exit, Class X does not want to make uh, an exit which would make for a long trip back home. Well, they definitely don't want to have a long trip back home. I mean, the other issue is this. You have, from Class X aside, there, there are three high bowlers have yet to bowl. So this is the first one. you got Brian Walton, then Chris Fawcett, and Zachary Bagholtz. And all three of them are your high anchors, shall we say, for Class X. Arsenal, on the other hand, you have Nick Wells, you have Zach Vitelli, and then you've got Tom Jordan. Tom, Tom Jordan, arguably, is the high man for Arsenal. Zach Vitale, very good. Nick Wills, very good. This could be interesting. This could be fun. We will see. And Nick Wills back in his jersey is, I still hate you. Well, we'll see. Does Nick Avron still hate us? That is the question. Why would I hate you, Gordon? I don't know, but Nick Wills hates everybody. He does get to play with my hair all the time. You've seen some of the videos. He does get to play with my hair. So, all right. So, key is done. Let's hit the red key here so that we don't have any scoring issues, and then we will start play. And I love the, and I love the way that Gordon pointed out that Class X bowlers, there are three big bowlers, so to say, have not bowled yet. So kind of a boxing strategy, jabbing before you start throwing haymakers, because you definitely want to pace yourself around the ring. And the boxing ring right now is lane threes and three and four here at Bowler City. So now let's see if the heavy hitters will start throwing some heavy shots. And that looks like it's getting up the lane. And he's getting up the lane with a lot of power, but unfortunately does not take out the 10 pin. Yeah, and this is, I don't know if Class X is going to be feeling any pressure at this moment, but there is pressure here for Class X. Because they've got to win this game. If they do not win this game, they will lose a three of five. And depending on what the overall wood is, they may lose that also. Walton with the spare. All over that spare was Brian. And we have Nick up on lane three. Looking to keep this momentum going. Uh, amazing start. Two to zero. Great situation to be in. You have a carpet laid out for you. Hopefully you don't mess the carpet up. Hopefully you don't track it up with any mistakes. Because he will not only still hate us, he will hate himself. By the way, Nick will still hate you. And I think he hates you. I think he hates all of us. But let's see if he loves this shot. He hates you, I'll tell you that much. He liked that shot. There's a strike from Arsenal. And let's see if the hate can turn to love. Because you know what? Love and hate can make a tornado of strikes. And let's see if uh, the category will be F5 on lane four. F5 on Well, we got a hurricane coming in. We do have a hurricane. It's going to be hitting us next weekend. 
Really? Maybe it's going to come a week early. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I guess it will be clashing with the hurricane. You're going to be rocked by the hurricane. Oh, well, here I am. Yes, very, very good, very good. Yes, by the way, for everybody, again, who thought that Sean Dice punts were bad, we've got both of us together. That makes it ten times worse. So looking for a shot here that's ten times better, and he gets a double for Nick Wells. Nick, who looked like he was struggling all during practice, has figured it out here. And, and again, communication, communication, communication. You see everybody here chatting on the Arsenal side. Class acts is sort of scattered all over the place right now. All is Wells that will hopefully end Wells, and the Wells still full. Hopefully the well will not be dry for Biggie. Well, there's Walton. There's Biggie with the strike. That's right. Being uh, from Brooklyn, I can always appreciate Biggie on the back of a jersey. And right now, hopefully um, the 10 pin commandment. hypnotize you? Oh, yes. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The Sometimes 10 pin commandment. Can't you see? Sometimes <laughs> the strikes will hypnotize me. Invite Gordon to karaoke. And now, don't invite me to karaoke. You can invite Brian to start striking, though. Yes, exactly. And now we're getting some life over from Class A. Exactly. All it took was a couple of Biggie verses and a little DJ mixing action from Biggie himself. Biggie Brian. That's right. And let's see what the well's saying. Are we going? Are we going to drink from the wells, or are we going to let everything just pour out into potential mistake? I was going to say, if Wells leaves a 10-pin or a 7-pin, you may hear a little bit more noise from Class Axe. Mm. Here goes Wells, third shot. That ball looks high, and it is 3, 6, 9, 10. Six? Yeah, that, that was not a sexy six right there. That was a very unsexy six. Uh, no, no, but you know what? Some sixes could look good if they put some makeup, and right now that Maybelline would be if he was to make this, because anything less would be uncivilized, and to that degree. Speaking of hurricanes. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you put makeup on a six, it's still a six. But he did get the spare. Well, any six is good with the lights out, and if you flip it upside down, it'll be a nine. And speaking of six and nine, we are trying to get some action on frame four, on lane four. Class Axe, by the way, has the lead, and they need it because, again, three out of five at stake. That, that pot is up for grabs, and Arsenal will grab it if they win any of the next three games. The three games of the brass ring. And speaking of three, you mentioned that Class X did not have their three big bowlers in yet. So I, yeah, so basically it could be either they had a bad start or a rope-a-dope situation, take a couple hits to land some big shots. Or maybe you think about it this way, sort of like baseball and pitching. Maybe you're hoping that one of your third or fourth string pitchers can get a win early in a series and maybe steal one. So when the table setters are there and the heavy hitters come in, they're there and there's a lot less pressure. In this case, didn't happen. And neither did that strike. No, it did not. Uh, we were maybe going to two for eight. And I was saying before, two L's facing one another, adjust an angle, creates a W. And we're trying to see if they can create a W right here. It would be real big for Biggie to pick this up and keep the momentum going and hopefully go sheet, as we say. Right now, half a W is a seven. And so he picked that up. See, if you move the spare and the seven together and move it up a little bit, that's a W. Well, it's all about perspective. It's all about angle. And right now, they're trying to keep their angle strong, and they're trying to keep their their road not so long, but it seems like it's going to be a long road because they're down 54 pins. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a long road right now. Fifth frame coming up. Class X is up by one pin going into the fifth frame. Big strike right there. No question about that one. Now, here comes Nick Wells. Wells can take the lead right back for Arsenal with the strike in the fifth frame. Obviously, anything less than that, regardless of what it is, and Class X will still hold on the lead as we go into the second half of game three. And, and right now, the second half sometimes is where you got to finish the match. Even when you go into a game, you already know it's 10 frames, but five could be one game, and then five frames could be the second game. And right now, it's looking like... We have a match. Oh, we definitely have a game on here. Nick Will sleeps the 10 pin. Class X will take, will keep the lead. And again, that is a game Class X needs. We're turning over here. Anthony Nieves, who's our camera guy, put the headphones, turned the headphones off because he heard a big rumble, wondering what the heck that is. Yeah, that is thunder. It is loud. Well, we'll make the spare here as we go into the second half of game three. Again, Class X has got to have this one. 
in order for any chance for them to win this clash, they've got to have this game. Right now they've had it, but it is the very slimmest of margins that they have this game by at this moment. Yes, it's, um, you, you do not want to be down ever. You definitely don't want to be down two. And right now they are down two. But you have to fight through it. You got to throw punches sometimes. You got to fight back and throw it better. Well, that and almost the question almost becomes who's going to figure out lane three first? Because that is where both bowlers have thrown spares and not strikes. That for Nick Wells in the third and fifth, and that for Brian Rollins right now in the fourth frame. If he can pick it back up, Class X can take a decent sized lead here. Sixth frame coming up. Can he get it back up? Yes, he can. Big strike for Class X. And that is a double right there, a big double. And he has to throw a couple of more doubles to feel a little more comfortable. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right now, Class X up by 11. That can go away quickly if he doesn't throw a strike here. And Nick Will doubles, and uh, yeah. The the Hurricane people are watching this match, and apparently they're approving. Will they approve of this shot? That looks oof. That looks oof for Penn. Rolling a little exotic there. That was extremely high, and um, not the kind of high that you were like to experience, especially when the drama is high. Call it rolling thunder. Rolling thunder rolling indeed. Thunder. And let's see if this is a five-star spare and if he could frog splash it. He should make this one anyway. All right, well, once again, we're at that same point. A pair of strikes will give Arsenal the lead back as Nick Wells is up. Uh, class acts can go out the door for a 246. Arsenal can go out for a 256. So theoretically, Arsenal technically has a lead, but it still has to be done on the grid. It does have to be done on the grid. And any mistake will get them maybe off the grid, if not score-wise, mentally. But there is definitely an edge. Right now, they are comfortable. They have two victories, uh, first two games. And that is not what we needed. A uh, uh, shout-out to UBA OG, a Pat Halise. Shout-out to Pat. Pat Hollis has shown up on lane three, the two, eight, ten. And that is a mess for Arsenal right now. They cannot, they're already behind. You're looking for a double. You're not looking for that sort of a triple. Two, eight, ten, no good. No good at all, but what is good? You can either play hero ball or just go for the two. It's late. You got to play hero ball here. He goes for the two. Right now, Arsenal is up by 22 as we go into the eighth frame. I'm sorry, wrong. Class X is up by 22 as we go into the eighth frame. Arsenal running out of frames. Running out of frames indeed. And when there's no more frames, you got to just chalk it up to the game because you cannot hate the player that you're playing, even though he does still hate you, but you have to hate the game. He hates me. I don't know about me may like you. I know he hates me. Almost got to have it here. Eighth frame coming in. He's got it. There's a strike. Well, everyone likes me except for the ones who don't. And that's true. That's true. <laughs> I like that. Everyone likes me except for the ones that don't. Yeah, and then Nick Wells already said exactly what I was afraid of. He was trying to make that adjustment. That adjustment failed. Can Class Axe take advantage of it? Can Walton take advantage of it right here with the strike? He does. Pivotal ninth frame. Big ninth frame coming up for Class Axe. If he, and let me make sure I do my math correctly, I'm pretty sure that it does any mark here from class X, and they cannot get shut out. A strike here puts a lot of pressure on Nick Wilson Arsenal. Obviously, if class X opens and goes out the door, then Arsenal will win, and they'll win this one. They'll take at least three games. Big shot here coming up. That is a strike, and that is a big double over by Brian Walton. Yeah, that was a big-time shot by a big-time player. Like I mentioned before, one half of the uncapped Northeastern Tag Team Champions. No stranger to this type of situation, making shots when you need the shot. When you need a shot, take a shot. And speaking of shot, he took a shot of his beverage, and I think he earned that little that little bit of swig. <laughs> earned, a, earned a little bit of swig. Now again, pressure over Nick Wells. This pretty much has to be a strike. They are down by many. If he doesn't throw a strike, the game's mathematically over. Got a strike, that's a big shot. Okay, now, again, 22 pin lead from Class X. If Arsenal goes out the door, it's a 224. And if he goes out the door, Class X has got to show up, they need to have a marking account. 22, uh, 22 pin victory would be good. Also for a total pinfall being that they're down 54 pins, yeah, gotta, that would then cut it down to 32. Yeah, you gotta cut that down. Yeah. You gotta chop it down. Gotta, gotta chop it down. 
First ball here, 10th frame, it's gotta be a strike. And it is. Again, for Arsenal to have anything, it, yeah, exactly, make, make me work is what they're saying here. Arsenal up by that, 28-38, yes. So, if Arsenal gets the second one, Class X has got to show up, marking good count, obviously a strike. Strike, nine, spare, I, I'm sorry, nine spare strike is what Class X needs to win if Arsenal goes out the door in the 10th. Second ball here, Nick Hill, uh, Nick Wells got to have it, dozen games over, four pin. And four pin right. I shouldn't say game's over. Game is not over yet. If he makes this, it's 27. 9 0 from Class X, and we'll have another roll off. Any mark from Class X, they win, they get on the board. Assuming Nick Wells makes a spare, and he will. Yes, he does. He's all over that spare. Shout out to Nick Hill, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. 213 finish for Arsenal. Uh, Nick Wells not necessarily happy with the ending, but it's all about how it finishes for Class X. Class X needs to, f to start big in the 10th Nick frame. Everin's looking for another 7-10 split here. Well asked, but you did not receive. And right there, a big time shot, big time player. He got Biggie on his shirt for a reason. And right there, that was notorious. That was a notorious ball to be thrown in frame 10 lane three and not only are they going to get their first game in the inaugural clash but a major chance to take a major chunk and chop down the 54 pin deficit and they are trying to turn 54 into i want to say 21. uh if he hits this it'll be 33 what will be 21. yep i just mathed you math good I math good. You math good. Yes. Thank you, sir. Your math is good. You know, and when your math is good, it always adds up. <laughs> your punmanship is good too. Oh, and we're gonna have 23. All right, but that was big. 244 is the score for uh, one half of the Northeastern uncapped tag team champions. And he came in like a champion. And when a hero comes along, he basically helps you sing the song a little differently. All right, here we go. Time for round four. Class acts on the board. You start. I, I have a feeling I know what's coming, but let's have it official. It's going to be me. It is Zach Vitelli coming up. Brian, Zach Vitelli is bowling. Who are you counting with? Zach Bogholtz. Zach Bogholtz, you're on. Good luck to both of you. Zach. We have a Zach attack. Anything you want to say? Oh! No, no, no fortune. No, come on. Come, no. Nah. No side skis? No, no side skis. Anybody, anybody, oh, no side ski. Anybody want a side ski? Come on, have some Nobody wants a side ski. Chanda, you want a side ski? Nah, nobody wants side ski. Yeah, he's looking for a side ski to bet on himself. Apparently, nobody wants to do that. So let me start that. You start chatting about them. I'll get the practice time going. All right. So current situation right now in the inaugural UBA clash. Arsenal up two games to one. Game one, we had a roll off between Pedro Agapito and Justin Sloan. Justin Sloan coming out victorious. In the second game, we had Mike Merrill against Doug McFarlane. Doug McFarlane gaining at that time was a 54 pin advantage over Class X. Game three was just took place. That was Brian Walton versus Nick Wells. Nick Wells falling to one half of the Northeast uncapped tag champs. Brian, 244 to 213, cutting the deficit down to 23. And right now we have game four. And game four, they they are right now warming up. I'm sorry. You're just going to sound the real good. You don't talk right now. Damn, girl. Yeah, I got ahead of myself. I thought you were starting. Oh, they will. They will fuck that.
All right, so right now we are going into game four of the first ever UBA clash. So a little recap. Well, we already did the recap. <laughs> but I'll give, I'll give it to Gordon Pepper for the recap. Okay, here's the recap. Recap, Arsenal has taken a two-zip lead at the beginning. First game, we had a 190-190 roll-off with Justin Sloan defeating Pedro Agapito by that amount. Game two, more the same, Doug McFarlane defeating Mike Morell. Game three, Class Axe gets on the board. Brian Walton, one half of the Uncat Tag Team Champions, defeats Nick Wells. Game four, and again, Class Axe still down. They need this one to win three out of five. Zach Vitelli up for Arsenal, and he's starting the match, and he is starting with a Tempin. Zachary Bach holds over for Class X. Now, if it gets, I mean, regardless, game match five, Chris Fawcett, the other half of the uncapped tag team champions, will go up against Tom Jordan. That is going to be fun. Tom, Tom Jordan, by the way. Oh, you see he's fairly known in the uh, bowling circuit, shall we say? And Zachary Talley looks like he's going to make the spare, and he does. Yeah, we have a battle of the Zacks right here. We do. It's a Zack attack. Zack will win this match. I guarantee I you Zack will win this I got, match. I got, I got 1000 on Zack. I'll put $1,000 on Zack. Of course, they're both named Zack, so that's not that much of a stretch. Zack up. Zack. Two pin. Oh, yes. Two pin. Well, um, the two pin. So, so both Zacks may be winding up with two spares. Indeed. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're hearing Nick going, how dare you not bleeping strike. Now, Nick was supposed to be out of here ages ago, and yet you're still here. We're actually about to leave. <laughs> oh, you're about, oh, you're about to leave. Okay, bye, bye Nick. Don't, don't be sorry. Don't apologize. It was fun. Other people are here making fun. So we have a spare so pair of spares from a pair of Zacks. The class axe axe is up, and that is also a tempin. Yeah, flying tempin. Wow, flying tempins. Mm -hmm. And looking to make the ten anyway. Yes. So two spares for uh, Zach Boggles. Uh, Zach. If I'm saying his name you, correct. Uh, uh, yes, that is how you call Boggles. it. Yeah, Boggles and Vitelli. It may be just better to say Boggles and Vitelli. Yeah. And of course, to make it worse, he's got hose in the back of his jersey. Uh -huh. So yeah, Boggles and hose, even uh though his name is not hose. Oh. Even though oh. that is his jersey name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's that not really Hosier. That is definitely and then, Oh. Also like not really a strike. And, and Zach. And Zach Arsenal versus Zach X. <laughs> there you go. Zach Arsenal. Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure you want to short, shorten Arsenal at all because, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, we could have, again, two spares for two Zachs. All yeah, right. Zach Square with Zach Spares. Oh, Zach Square Zach with Zach, Zach spares. spares. All right. I vote for Nick to be the new addition to the UBA entertainment team. And covers that right there. Nine pin, no problem, and we are tied going into frame. Could this be whoever strikes first wins? Could that be whoever strikes first wins? Hey, first strike, definitely send a message. Um, it's all about who's going to carry and who's not. And I heard one of the members of Arsenal mentioning that they're getting a little funky. Matter of fact, it was um, Zach Patelli who said that they're getting a little they're getting a little funky up there. Getting a little funky. Wow. Well, we have another nine pin going for a potential nine spare. No, he's not pulling right now. No, I'm not. No, no, you're not. Nick Gavron no saying, comment. yeah, no comment. <laughs> Nick Gavron deciding that he is not going to be in this clash today. But he's hanging out. That's too much thunder and lightning for me to say anything about that. But, um, <clears throat> but let's see if we could uh, strike right here. And well, he's not going to strike right there. He will get the spare, though. Well, yes, but th and exactly. Did strike thunder pin. did strike the pin. Strike the pin. I got it. Hey, there you go. Back it up, punts. All right. All right. So, all right. so Zach, I heard you make mention that. Uh, oh, Zach Vitelli, by the way. <laughs> you may mention they're getting a little funky. What, what are you experiencing right now on the lane? There's a little bit of under over. Uh -huh. 
you, you start to roll out two eights, yeah. and it's like you, you get a little slow, it hooks a little too much, you miss it in a little bit, either it's high for plays or it hooks. I, I noticed that, yes, a lot of over-under, but right there he got over the hump, and he definitely carried, did Zachary Boggles. Well, that, that looked more like Mariah carry than real carry, but he did get the strike, and that's the important thing. Oh, that carry was hideous. All he wants for Christmas is more strikes. All he wants for Christmas is another X, which he's going to get. Big double for Vitelli, and now the gauntlet, I'm sorry, big double for Bogholtz, and now the gauntlet is being thrown to Vitelli. Yes. ZB over ZV, and right now we're seeing if ZV can do it on the TV, your TV screen, which is Caffeine TV. And let's see if... Vitelli can get there and get over that over under reaction that he was getting and he carries as well so right now Zach's mimicking strikes only difference is Mr. Buggles has a double and Vitelli is keeping the house clean but that is his first strike in frame four and, and we apologize to anybody watching on Caffeine TV, the UBA, YouTube or anything that just saw that display of um I'll just say the first syllable in arsenal. Let's put it that way. We got to see some arse yes. and all. Can you make it clap? I do not want to make arse it clap. Arse and all. Yeah, arse and all, exactly. Very good. And that definitely kicked yeah. arse and all, and all the pins are gone. What? Can you make it clap? I can't make it clap. No, I, I don't. I don't. No, if you get a watermelon? No, that, that'll be caffeine after dark. If you get a watermelon here, uh, I'll crush that. Well, there we go. And um, this is why the rating is going to be TVMA. And, <laughs> and right now, he's trying to make sure that he takes advantage. And oh, gymnastic pin does not take out the 10. Welcome to UBA After Dark with your hosts, Sean Knight Faison and Gordon Pepper. Getting salty with the pepper. Yes, that's what we want and what we're... Something like that. We're looking to make a 10 pin here, and he will. Yes, he is. He's all over that 10 pin rear really, like free lunch. So, right, right now, we got a tie game going on, even though it will not be tight in either direction with Arsenal on a double class axe on a spare. We are going into the second half of game four. And class axe right now. Trying to at least keep it even here, which they will if we can get a strike out of here from Bob Holtz, and we will. So, contrasting styles here. Uh, Zach Buggles throwing two hand, a lot of power, gaining a lot of revs, uh, hitting hard, hitting very direct. You have to see Zach Vaselli really getting under the ball, really smooth approach, and trying to create a little more angle, choosing a tr uh, again a predictable surface like we saw from Doug McFarlane earlier, and much higher shorts um, being pointed out by Nick Gavron, not myself. He is the fashion aficionado right now on the lanes, not I. But hopefully it will be an I as an I am striking. And he's we got claps for shorts for all those ladies who may be watching Caffeine TV. <laughs> and, 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 right now, and right now, entertainment is the main thing, and he is entertaining a potential victory in the inaugural clash here for the Underground Bowling Association. More than bowling, we're here to entertain you as well. I'm not sure if I consider that short stuff entertainment, but okay. So right now, however, Arsenal can take the lead here with a strike from Vitelli. Here comes that ball. That ball's a little bit long and a little bit high in 3-6-10. So Arsenal sort of has a lead, except they won't if Class Axe throws another strike. Very high on the head, but again, you know, that's one situation where too much head is not good, even if it's a Saturday. But... What we have here is a potential. <laughs> Let me get pause, pause, pause. You're pausing me, and you're talking about the dude's shorts. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> There, well, 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 there is no uh-oh in that situation. Definitely converts it. Uh, the seven count was not good, considering that three strikes came before the seven count, so that does make a difference. But the difference maker here will be a double for Zach Boggles, representing Class X. Boggles right now looking to double. They did that. Class X takes a lead, and he does. Class X now with a lead. They are up by three as we go into the eighth frame. Arsenal once again running out of frames. Class X can go out the door for a 258. Uh, Arsenal not out of it at all. 245. 
So only 13 pin game. This strike here, big for class acts. If he hits it, they can't get shut out. If he does not hit it, it depends what Arsenal does. And to point to what you said, a 13-pin um, victory will cut the deficit down to only 10 pins. Yep. That's right. Everything, it looks like if things go the way that they are, everything will be up for grabs game five. It is Ritelli's job to at least keep it close. And again, and, and again, force back halts to throw a mistake in the ninth and tenth frame, or in the words of Nick Gavin, to see if there's any more pocket seven spares, pocket seven pin leaves lurking. That's the strike from there. Because it was almost left. <laughs> it was almost left. It was, there was almost one there, except not by the person that he wants to see leave it. Big. I take you for someone that wants to win the match. That's what I take you for. What are you talking about? I would never wish that upon anyone. You, you're full of, shall we say, moo poo. I was going to say your nose got a little longer when you said that, but yeah. I ain't going to say that. No, Jesus. Uh, uh, sh sh yeah. Shout out and commiserations to anyone that is currently. Shout out to everybody who's watching it. Commiserations to anyone that's actually listening and paying attention to what we're saying. Well, I know who's definitely paying attention. Um, not only Arsenal, but Class X is paying attention. Yeah, big shot right here to double. He gets it. Well, the lead for Arsenal could go down. So here, here is the deal. Class Axe needs the strike in the ninth, first one in the tenth. They lock this up. We see a game five. Anything less than that, and Arsenal produces in the tenth, and then they will win at least a three out of five point. First shot here. Does not get it. Seven ten. A lot of so, gusto was in that last shot. There's a lot of gusto, and that was huge. However, and Backholtz knows it, that is a bad time to leave a seven pin. Ball's got a hook in it, Will. So Boggles, he definitely wants to be the hero. He definitely wants to come in and come in um, with, with guns blazing or axes sharpened. And he was looking to take a big chop out of the lead and out of the deficit of Arsenal. And he might have gotten a little, a little too uh, aggressive with that shot. Let's see if he relaxes and throws it. Gets a little lob. And a lob did not do the job. It did not. Now here's the situation. Obviously, a, a mark from Arsenal is a win. An open is a loss. Zach's going to have to go for it regardless. The difference is 28 pins. Oh, almost. But, but, but in certain circumstances, it almost didn't matter in this case. Now, here we go to Arsenal, and we have more cursing going on. Now, here, here's what we have from Arsenal. If they mark, they win, that is game three. If they don't, and they open, then we go to a game five. This is for game four. There it is. Strike from Arsenal, they will take game four. They will win three out of five. <laughs> and that's not and that's not gonna matter right there. And unfortunate turn of events for Class X. It was looking like they were really going to take a big chop and chunk everything out, and it did not work out for Class X. Class X, right there, not victorious in game four. Zachary Boggles uh, falling victim to Zachary Vitelli wins the battle, wins the battle of the Zacks and Arsenal. And Arsenal is right now up. Three games to one. The deficit has now. Oh, wait a minute. All right, difference 14. All right, so you have game five. I think you know who's who you're playing here. Me again. Tom Jordan. Oh, Tom Jordan coming in and Chris Foster. Chris Foster, yes. All right, good luck to both of you guys. Yeah, here we go. You don't have to talk now, guys, until five seconds left on the practice. Right. Okay. So you can take a break for a second. All right. You can take a break for a second. Oh, you gotta pay for it. Oh, you gotta pay for this. Get it. 
did its job. <laughs> it's sound. All right, what's going on, UBA? <laughs> we are now entering game number five. Game number five of the inaugural UBA clash taking place between Class X and Arsenal. Arsenal up three games to one. It's all about matches, all individual, one game, and total pinfall. That total pinfall right now results like this. Class X is down by 37 pins overall. If they, if they win this game, they will, they will still be down in terms of games, but the overall pinfall is very important as well. Right now, we're seeing Chris Fawcett, the other half, the other half of the, un, the uncapped Northeast Tag Team Champions, along with Brian Walton. Uh, for Arsenal, their fifth, their fifth competitor, their fifth bowler is Tom Jordan. And Tom Jordan, playing from the left side, looking to get um, the the closing, the closing victory, the closing game, and to put an exclamation point and cap this sentence off. And the sentence being that we won the first clash. Yeah. Well, right now, uh oh, right now Arsenal is definitely up three to five on the class over a wood which is in play is 37 pins, which means in, in order to salvage, Class X has got to win by 37. If they don't, it is game, set, match. Arsenal wins everything. And right now, opening up in the first frame is not what you want to do when you're chasing down Tom Jordan. Got to beat him by 38 pins. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah, 38 would be great. 38 would be great, obviously. Jordan would love to go 38 would be great over here. And that's one, Tom Jordan. Uh, he's got many titles under his hands, so Arsenal is looking for him to complete it and go home. And if you're Class Axe, you, you've got to be kicking yourself on this. Class Axe theoretically should be up 3-1 to one and be winning at this point. Uh, no, definitely. I definitely agree with that. They should be. But, they, yeah. they, they, they should be a 3-1. Class Axe had an, an ill-fated 7-10 split, and then right there in the 10th frame, 9th and 10th frame, Zach Boltals could have win, and they didn't. Jordan right now, second shot, looking to double up, and doesn't, four pin.
Jordan right now with the four pin. Looking to make the spare here, and he will. I'll say this in terms of Arsenal. They've been, they've been clutch in the 10th frame, and they've been clutch when they've needed to be. Indeed. Um, the 10th frame, is, it shows that um, it's never over until the fat lady sings and hasn't been singing that, that quick. There's been a lot of um, cosmic shifts in a matter of a frame or two. Yeah, that's, that's crazy talk. Crazy but so crazy that is brilliant. And brilliance is when you close frames. And if you're doing that, you will continue to be a scholar. And this is the school of hard knocks right now for class acts. Class acts needs to get in class, stay in class, and hopefully excel at the top of their class and find a way to knock down that 37 pin deficit, maybe even about 38 or more. Well, they have to in this case. If, if they do, they win the overall wood, they'll salvage. If they don't, Arsenal wins. It, it is that simple. Oh, double for <laughs> double for Fawcett, and I'm sure what's going through Fawcett's mind right now is, again, you are based on your team. This is the ultimate team event. You're relying on wins and losses by the rest of your teammates. How are you enjoying this so far, by the way? Oh, I'm loving this. The first clash, amazing. And speaking of first, I believe this is the first lefty we've seen in any of these contests so far. Well, right now, if it's if it's there, Tom Jordan with a hit over there and again. Tom Jordan, he doesn't. I mean, obviously, he wants to win. He just cannot win, or he cannot lose by less than 38 pence. That being said, right now, Tom Jordan wants to win this, and technically, got a time match right now. One pin game, favor of Arsenal. Definitely in favor of Arsenal. Arsenal in the um, proverbial driver's seat right now, and the road is clear. It doesn't look like there's going to be any traffic, uh, but let's not hope. Well, let's hope, rather, that they don't find any speed bumps. Very true. Let's see over here what we have from John Jordan to fourth frame. He left a one pin first time out. He leaves nothing this time out. Jordan looking to close this one up for Arsenal. So far, so good on his side of the road. This side of the lane is honestly untouched out the duration of these games. So he has a much smoother look. And there's been a lot of different righties throwing a lot of different styles. So it's going to be a lot of different, a lot of different things that could get in the way of someone who wouldn't be prepared. But it seems that Chris Fawcett, the faucet is not dry yet. The water's still running. And there's still a chance for him to run to a walk down victory in terms of total pinfall and wood. Well, first, first things first right now. Fawcett can go off the door 279. Tom Jordan can go off the door 280. So we got a one pin game going on here. Mm, that one pin. One is the loneliest number, but it could be the number that could be either the greatest of all or the worst of all, depending on if the pins fall. And We've seen that already. Here's another one for Fawcett. We, we, we've seen already the craziness that has happened. Look at game one. I mean, game one almost clearly set the tone for class acts today, which is this close, got to have it, got to need it, doing well. Brian Walton showed up. I mean, I mean, again, you're looking at it. Class acts, three games in the 10th frame. They won one of them. They could have had three. Game two, forget it. You're not winning that one. Game three, up for grabs. Game one, certainly up for grabs. I'm sorry. Game, game three, they won. Game four, up for grabs. Game one, certainly up for grabs. Yeah, great points being made. And, you know, they, they called in the big guns when needed. Unfortunately, for the last match with um, Zach Boggles, um, I know his mind's got to be a little boggled about how that just took a turn. But speaking of taking a turn, let's see if his ball can turn into the pocket. And high flush for Tom Jordan. Jordan still up by one. Again, gauntlet being thrown. Chris Foss has still got to carry. And, he, and he's still got to keep going. He's still got to... Still got to throw marks, still got to keep that in, and hoping that Tom Jordan makes a mistake here. Right now, going into the second half of game five, this is the final game of this first clash. Arsenal looking to get the, looking to be the complete victors of this clash. Class acts trying to stop them.
Jordan right now. That ball's gonna hook up a little bit. It does. Four in a row for Jordan. Here comes Arsenal, and again, you're running out of, if you're Chris Fawcett, obviously you can still win. You cannot afford to make a mistake right now. No, you cannot, because even though you're not down by much, you're still down. And right now, <laughs> forget Tom Jordan, you might as well call him Tom Ford, because this game is looking tailor-made for him right now. Yes, he wants your love, he wants your strikes. Ooh, that could have been a complete and utter disaster. In this case, seven pin up there. Yes, a seven pin, um, he wasn't, uh, necessarily victorious on his 10 pin attempt. Let's see if the seven pin is and should be a lot easier to convert, especially at this stage of the game. Well, it should be. That being said, and again, I've said this a bunch of times here today, Class Axe is running out of frames. Fawcett makes a spare. Again, now he was down one. He's now going to be down over more than 20. And obviously, if he doesn't win the game, they don't win the wood. Yes, yeah, so you, need, you need one to have both. And even if you get one, you got to get one to a great degree. And, well, right now, much like the degrees, <laughs> they're dropping here in Bowler City. And they're yeah. dropping in the lanes. Well, I, I love the air conditioning. I, I don't mind it dropping degrees in the air conditioning here. I do mind it if it's on the lanes. And there's another four pin. And now, all of a sudden, the doors are open for Tom Jordan to take this one out, lock out Chris Fawcett. And if he does that, two strikes, next two frames, Arsenal will be your winners of the first UBA clash. Yeah, making history are both teams. Um, they do remember teams that are participants, but they will always remember the victors. And the victors, it looks like, well, considering that nothing catastrophic happens, will be the Arsenal. And the Arsenal looking to have the season that they envision for this season that has just started. Well, both seasons, both teams very successful last year. Arsenal won the North, New, New Jersey Northeast, uh, made the playoffs. Class acts steamrolled through the Metro North, as you are very aware of, since you're in that district and you still are in that district. Yes, I am in that district. Get a chance to see these guys perform, and I'm watching Arsenal perform now. And it's so funny that we have these two teams from their divisions, because there have been um, murmurings that New Jersey Northeast is no longer the toughest division. But I'm on the fence about that, because as tough as I know Metro North is, New Jersey They've got their stripes. They, they ring bells, not just in the north, but in the south as well. New Jersey Northeast, very strong division. New Jersey Northwest, very strong division. I'm sure eventually we're going to see some teams in New Jersey Northwest challenge either themselves or, or other teams to come up and have fun at a clash. Yeah, they're definitely throwing mega strikes, and maybe they'll be throwing mega strikes if they go to Mega Bowl, which will be happening in the future. Speaking of mega bombs, Tom Jordan right now up by 43. He can go out the door for 280. The best that class acts can do right now with Chris Fawcett is 247. So theoretically, the game's not over yet, but Fawcett's got to throw strikes. Must, must, must throw strikes. And more importantly, he needs Tom Jordan to make a mistake. And there's a 10 pin, and that is going to do it here. 7, 90, 230. Well, doing my math very, very quickly. I mean, theoretically, uh, this, this game is still a game, but but Tom Jordan does not need a mark anymore in order to close this one out. Nope. 236 max for Chris, Mr. Chris Fawcett. And got to be some disappointment there. I mean, you travel out, you come here to show out, and then you end up going out with, a, with your head held a little low and went out of your sails. Well, if, you, if you're Chris Foster, you got to be a little bit frustrated for him today. Your tag team partner wins, gets them on the board. Your leadoff bowler has a chance to win this. Your third bowler has a chance to win his game. Class Axe had the opportunities to take this match. Yeah, they had opportunities, and opportunities are there, but opportunities are um, only words when you can't take advantage of said opportunity. And Arsenal was all over it. They loaded up the cannons, they blasted the axes, and now the axes are going to go back up to the trees and the mountains, and they're going to maybe collect themselves, get themselves together. This could either be a deter for them, or this could be gasoline for the fire. That is their season. Yeah, Jordan right now has been automatic. Last game coming up, he can go out the door for 280. And that's, again, does not matter pretty much what Fawcett does at this point. Jordan needs a six count in the 10th frame. And he gets that. That's all she wrote. Arsenal will win the match, four to one. And they'll win the clash. 
and then win the overall win. They'll take everything but one game. Everything but one game. I would say an amazing performance by an arsenal of bowlers. <laughs> There you go, literally and figuratively, and that will do it. Tom Jordan will win the fifth game for Arsenal. Arsenal has officially won this clash. Yes, it is. This is the very first clash, and right now this clash was amazing. Clash for one team, crash for another, but we are looking forward to seeing many more of these. So anybody out there who feels that they have an Arsenal or maybe a group that can throw balls better than axes, or anybody that they feel that they can take out. Come on down. Choose the place, choose the time, bring your nickels, bring your dimes, because we're here to clash. There you go, the, the official, Tom Jordan with one more strike will officially finish with a 280. Yeah, 279 for Tom Jordan. Jordan gives class acts no chance to catch up and no chance to try to sneak anything else out of this. Definitely understood the assignment. They came in and they put Tom Jordan as the finisher and that's what finishers do. They finish. Hitters hit and bowlers bowl and closers close. And he definitely um, pulled the strings close the curtain and then the lights on the stage are out the lights are out for class X at least on this day but there are many days and you can live to fight another day and they will come back and my condolences to whoever has to see them next everybody everybody come on down Your shorts. going on UBA is the voice of choice himself Sean I face and we just witnessed the first ever the inaugural UBA clash here at Bola City Hackensack New Jersey and I'm standing with the very first winners of the very first clash Arsenal y'all came loaded up you had the gunpowder you had the cannons and y'all were blasting them pins out of there you know, I'm standing here right now on my left Justin Sloan he bowled game one tell us your thoughts on the first ever clash uh, I didn't really bowl anything, so it wasn't me. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? Hey, every pin counted. Even the, the pins that you that you knocked down counted. The ones that you didn't knock down, they fired the other team up. They came and lifted you up. Yeah, that's true. That's why I got a good team behind me. I'm not worried about it. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And the numbers show that you guys came in with a game plan. So. I want to talk to Tom Jordan, who just finished bowling game five. Can you tell us a little bit about the team's game plan and what the strategy was coming into this class? Um, I don't know what their strategy was. This is my first event that I'm bowling for them. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of knew that they were going to put me on the bottom. I think partially because they were going to fry up and burn up a little bit on the right. Me being the only lefty was going to have a little bit of an advantage, and it's my home house. so. Um, I just tried to throw as many good shots as I possibly could, so. I, I think you accomplished that. You know, I, I don't know, man. A, a couple a couple shaky ones. I'm lying. There were no shaky ones. <laughs> no, I threw a bad one in there, but that's okay. We got the job done. You certainly did. Yeah, rather Jordan S. the way you came in the fourth quarter. Oh. You never know when that's going to happen. It could have happened the other way. You keep, you keep being Jordan like that. We're going to have to shave your head. That's all right. That's all right. Get you a logo. 
No, no. Oh, but hey, it was a pleasure watching you throw the ball. Way to close it out. And, you know, Zach, Zach Caselli, hey, your match was very interesting. Game four, Battle of the Zachs. Could have gone either way. In a matter of two frames, the whole game changed. Walk us through your, uh, what your thoughts were during that. Listen, Zach threw a great guy. Both caught a couple of breaks there. I just caught one when it mattered a little more. But listen, it was it was close. It was fun. And it felt good to get get the third win that way. It felt good. Yeah, definitely. In the clutch, it shows anything can happen. It's never over until it's over. Not exactly. Exactly. Definitely agree. That was great watching that match. That game was great. And let me let me talk to Nick. So now Nick, Nick Wells, um, you were the only one that that didn't win the game, but you threw it very well. Um, Brian threw it better. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you know what you feel? Like? I mean, hopefully you don't still hate me after this, but you know, uh, walk us through your thought process while dealing with um, Biggie himself, Brian Walton. Uh, he was able to just figure it out a little faster than I was. I lost that left lane pretty quick. Made a ball chain or a little speed change, and it was just too much. The ball never reacted, and I just couldn't get that left lane under me. And, uh, you know, he just he threw a great all game, and that, you know, he came out on top. It is what it is. But this team's great. You know, we got a real good squad, and uh, we'll be there again this year for uh, hopefully the championship. Yeah, you know, you guys had a great season last season. Uh, I think only good things that have come for you guys going into this season. You know, it's a tough division. Yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully we, I, I got a couple guys I'm working on. Hopefully we can pick them up and really add to this team. And like I said, this team's strong. Yeah, I, and we're going to be tough to beat this year for sure. And Arsenal indeed. All right. Last but not least, let me talk to the man of, of a thousand words. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, oh, he's going to make me feel a little taller, you know what I mean? Uh, hatchet man himself, Doug McFarlane, came in, smooth, quiet assassin, doing your thing, gaining that first big deficit, um, uh, or that big advantage, rather, that 54-pin advantage that you guys uh, gained thanks to your game. Walk us through. Yeah, just having to make, you know, make good shots out there and give my team you know, a little, little uh, bonus spins going forward, you know? Our team was great last season. I'm lo really looking forward to bowling with them again this year. I got a question for Arsenal. Who do y'all fear? Who y'all scared to get in the lanes with for this clash? Or, 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 who are you waiting for to call? Who are you begging for to call you out in a clash? I, th I think anybody can call us out right now. We'll bowl anybody on anything. That's the thing, on anything. On, on, on anything. We don't want to just keep on on the house shots. Anybody who wants a pattern, we're here for it. I mean, I, they got some guys in New York that's cool rolling patterns. You know, I, I could think of teams like, you no, know, I don't know, maybe Royal Flush. I'm pretty sure Royal Flush would love a piece of this. We, we, have, we have a lot, and we, uh, we have an array of people. So we'll take anybody on pretty much any pattern. Give me three teams just off the top of your head. I don't know three teams' names in the UVA. Uh, no, uh, all right, the Garden's a team, right? Uh -huh. yep. uh, exit Wounds, right? Uh -huh. I'm trying to think, who else do we bowl with? International Flavors is, I think, a team in our division, right? Uh -huh. uh, do you know more UVA? I'm, a, I'm new to this, so uh, I'm the last guy to ask. I, <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to put it like this. Any teams, either on this side of the bridge or any other side of any other bridge, Arsenal won the first one. Hey. You want to, you want to, you want to be the ones. You got to take the ones out. To be the ones, you got to beat the ones, and they're the ones. So you got to acknowledge them. And if you want to come for them, beat them if you can. Survive if they let you. Arsenal, y'all did your thing. First ever clash. Looking forward to seeing a lot more of y'all, whether it be in title matches, unholy, or any other event. All right, Caffeine TV, UBA. This is what it is all day. But Madouin Finals is 2009. Let's get it.